Okay, we're going to do a lesson on solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. Uh, just real quick, the reason that you would want to complete the square is to be able to convert from standard form to vertex form. We've learned how to go from vertex form to standard form a while ago, um, but vertex form is a little bit easier to graph in. So if you're graphing, sometimes you might like to take it from standard form to a vertex form so it's easier to graph, but we also just want to be able to show it to you on how to solve it in vertex form as well as put it into vertex form and solve. So here we go. The first two examples are just solving in vertex form. So I'll just do one of them really quickly. So right up here um, on our left, we're going to do subtract five from both sides in order to go ahead and try to start getting everything away from the um, quadratic binomial here. So we'll subtract five from both sides. And that's going to leave me with 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared equals 30. And now I continue to try to isolate, so I divide both sides by 2. x minus 3 quantity squared is equal to 15. And now I have to get rid of the squared portion of the left side. So I have to do the inverse operation of squaring. That would be taking the square root. Because those two things work against each other, they will cancel each other out. And I'm only going to be left with the, what's underneath the radical. And if I take the square root of the left side, I've got to take the square root of the right side. So at this point, you could pick up your calculator and find the square root. Or you could simply break down that radical um, to, to um, see if there's any perfect square factors. And you can write it in simplest radical form. Um, square root of 15 does not break down. If you did type uh, 15 into your calculator, square root of 15 into your calculator, you would have gotten 3.87. All right, so now at this point, you also need to keep in mind that there are two answers. So when I take the square root, I actually have a positive and a negative case here in order to accommodate the need for two answers of my quadratics. So I've got x minus 3 equals plus or minus 3.87. Now I want to continue to try to get x by itself, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So x is going to be equal to 3 plus or minus 3.87. So now that's going to split me into two scenarios. x is equal to 3 plus 3.87 or 6.87. Or x is equal to 3 minus 3.87 which is negative 0.87. And then we write those as uh, intercepts. So 6.870 and negative 0.870. And those are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. Those are the two x-intercepts. Those are the two points on the x-axis where the parabola crosses. All right, so that's how I would solve something in vertex form. Now I want to be able to put something into vertex form using completing the square. So this idea of completing the square helps me go from standard form to vertex form. Here we go. We're going to use um, the example on the left to be able to set this up. Okay, and then we'll come back and do the example on the left. I'm sorry, on the right second. All right, so first things first. I see that I have um, a 7 on the right side. Now, typically your gut would be, instinct would be to get um, everything on the same side to make a trinomial and start your factoring process, but we're not factoring this time, so I want you to keep them separate. So x squared plus 6x, and then I'm going to leave a gap here because I'm going to put in its place, I'm going to put... Um, what this new term is to help me be able to factor this in a really nice way so that I can show you the whole completing the square process. The completing the square process requires us to do b over 2 quantity squared, where b is that second term, sorry, b over 2a quantity squared. So what I'm going to end up doing here is replacing the c term with this because it's going to help me to factor in a, in a perfect square binomial. So we'll take a look at that. All right, so the B value this time is 6, and then the A value was 1. So then I have that entire thing squared. And you know enough about 
equations to understand that if I add something to the left side, I've got to add the exact same thing to the right side in order to keep everything equal. But again, this is the completing the square process. So x squared plus 6x, and now I simplify 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now I've got 7 plus 3 squared. And I continue to simplify x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 7 plus 9. So now the whole point of doing this is this what's on the left is a perfect square trinomial, meaning that this thing factors very nicely. Now, if you know you're factoring well, you'll look at the A value and the C value and say, okay, what are the factors of 1 and 9? Um, sorry, what are the fact 1 times 9 is 9. What are the factors of 9 that add up to the middle term B6? Well, that's 3 and 3. Well, the nice thing is that this term in each of the binomials is the square root of C. So if you could find the square root of C, it factors in this nice binomial. So um, you can even see that these two things multiply to give you 9 but add up to 6. And so that can be rewritten as x plus 3 squared. And then over here on my right side, I could combine like terms and get 16. So now, if I wanted this in vertex form, I could just subtract 16 from both sides. And I could look at this as x plus 3 quantity squared minus 16 equals 0. And I could even see at this point what the vertex is. The vertex would be negative 3, negative 16. And I even would know that the trinomial has, I'm oh, sorry, not the trinomial, the quadratic has uh, from the parent function been translated left 3 units and translated down 16 units. So graphing wouldn't be a challenge. But at this point, I do want to make sure that I know how to solve it from here. So similar to our previous example, we are going to solve it from this step. Okay, so what I would do like earlier, I would go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 quantity squared. And again, we take the square root because squaring and square root are inverse operations, and they cancel each other. So x plus 3 is equal to the square root of 16. Don't forget, plus or minus 16 because we are dealing with two solutions. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I got x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 4, which then yields x is equal to negative 3 plus 4, or 1, so 1, 0 is a solution, and x is negative 3 minus 4, or negative 7, which is negative 7, 0, as my other intercept. Okay, now I want to do an example of completing the square with you uh, where the lead coefficient is not a 1, so it gets a little bit more challenging, but still doable. All right, so again, we're not factoring, so we don't want a C value to start off. So then I've got 2x squared plus 8x is equal to 3. And now what I need to do is I want to factor out whatever this A value is so that I can get back to the previous uh, situation that I was comfortable with. So I can factor out a 2 here, and I'm left over with an x squared plus 4x and that's still equal to 3. So now I want to make sure that I leave room for my new C term on both sides and keeping in mind that that's going to be B over 2A quantity squared. That's what my completing the squared um, kind of formula is. So the B value here is going to be 4 over 2 times 1 quantity squared. And I'm going to end up doing that to both sides. but be incredibly careful. Don't forget about this too, because this everything that's inside of this parentheses is going to end up being multiplied by 2. So I end up writing 2 times what this new term is in order to compensate for that term that I added. All right. So again, this 2 is just like the number that's being multiplied out front on this side. So you have to make sure that this and this match. All right, simplifying process now, x squared plus 4x. Now we've got 4 over 2 is 2. Still got to square that thing. All right, equals 3 plus 2 times 2 squared. Continuing to simplify, x squared plus 4x plus 4 is 3 plus 
2 times 4. So this is going to factor really nicely. Remember, we said the square root of that is the uh, number that repeats itself. This number's positive, so x plus 2, x plus 2. Over on my right side, 2 times 4 is 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. So now I've got 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared equals 11. And you can see that if I subtracted 11 from both sides, that'll get me in a vertex form. I would know what my vertex is. I would know what all my transformations are. So if I was graphing it, I would simply subtract 11. I'm not graphing it. I'm solving. So here I'm trying to get everything away from x. So my next step would be to divide by 2. So then these would cancel out on my left side, but I'm left with x plus 2 quantity squared equals 5.5. Now I want to continue the solving process in order to make sure I get x by itself. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, x plus 2 quantity squared, and then the square root of 5.5. So then these cancel, and I'm just left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus. And at 5.5, you're probably going to want to use your calculator there. So 5.5. The square root of 5.5, rather, would be 2.35 if we round it to two decimal places. So subtract 2 from both sides, and that will help you to solve. Subtract 2, subtract 2. X is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2.35. So X is negative 2 plus 2.35 or 0 0.35, which is 0 0.350 for that x-intercept, or x is equal to negative 2 minus 2.35, which would be negative 4.35, or negative 4.350 for that intercept.